All right. He holds records for the most goals, assists, and points by a defenseman in NHL history. He's a Hall of Famer, of course, and he is leading a pack of former Bruins into the Heinz Arena tomorrow night for the Legends of Hockey game to benefit We Care for Kids. Good morning, Ray Borg. Good morning. <laughs> I was asked yesterday if I associated you more with that iconic uh, picture of you hoisting the cup after the Avalanche uh, won Stanley or as a, as a Boston Bruin on the whole. And, uh, and at that moment with the Avalanche, I think everybody who's a hockey fan, except for maybe a few in New Jersey, was a Ray Bork fan. You know, after living that in Colorado, it was an incredible experience. And one that, you know, when I won and uh, going through the whole thing and hosting, hosting the uh, Stanley Cup, and going through the parade and everything that comes with winning the Cup, you had so many vivid memories of so many guys that you played with and, and going to two finals. And if you have, would have had the opportunity of uh, living that in Boston, would have been incredible. And uh, I think as alumni and ex-Bruins, we kind of lived it through the Bruins team last year and saw it that it was going to be a special thing. And it certainly was last spring when uh, the Bruins won the Cup. And yeah. there was, uh, you know, 1.5 million that showed up at the parade and truly uh, an incredible atmosphere around that whole thing. Do you have a giant poster-sized picture of you hoisting that cup, though, somewhere in your in your homestead? Uh, yeah, I have a nice big painting that my wife uh, had done for me uh, by the, this great artist that, that really did an incredible job, and uh, I have it in my special room that I have some of my stuff, and uh, the centerpiece is this painting that when we won in Colorado, so pretty neat piece. How do you uh, deal with the fact that you're a hockey hall of famer that you had this historic career and uh you know that bono mentioned you had a u2 concert how do you how do you deal with that kind of uh ongoing fame well it's neat i mean I, i'm so lucky and blessed to be able to do something uh, that i just love doing uh for 22 years and uh, you would have asked me when i came into the league you know, uh, what What were your goals or what? It was just trying to establish yourself as a solid NHL player. And 10, 12 years would have been a nice career. And you look back uh, on your career after 22 years and everything that went on and the people you played with and, and the things that you accomplished, uh, it kind of blows you away. But that whole story was just a great positive story for hockey where the old man was chasing his dream of, you know, winning the cup. The only thing left really for me to, to do. And that's why uh, I asked to be traded and went to Colorado but so many, so many people that I run into know exactly where they were June 9th of 2001 uh, watching that game. And uh, it's pretty neat when I run into people. And then you find out that, you know, Bono goes on stage with uh, your jersey. And <laughs> it's just to announce that Ray Borks uh, just won the Stanley Cup. He was playing in the garden that night in Boston and people just went nuts. So many different stories that you hear like that. It's pretty neat. And for a guy to leave uh, a place where he's played for so long and then is invited and welcome back like I did uh, coming back to Boston is still home for for me and my family. Uh, the mayor asking you to come back with the cup and then there's 15,000 people that shows up at City Hall to support you. Yeah. And everybody that I've run into in Boston after coming back, uh, I think really uh, realized and acknowledged and understood why I left and the situation at that time in Boston wasn't a very good one. But certainly people appreciated and respected how I went about my business and the things that I did in Boston. I think that was a mutual respect between the fans and myself and uh to this day, uh, still in Boston and, and uh, really well respected uh, among uh, our fans in Boston. Yeah, and and obviously, if I was to ask you which is the you know the best hockey city, uh, I have a feeling you might be leaning a little bit towards Boston. But <laughs> but most of those original six teams have fans that are pretty widespread all over the place. So we got our share of Boston Bruins fans in the area here too. But this is really a, a Leafs and Detroit crazed area here. As a visitor to these uh, cities, between <laughs> Detroit and Toronto, in terms of where you played. Uh, where did you find the you know the big hotbed? Well, I think Toronto is really tough to be when you're thinking about you know the uh, crazy places that you go play in or the crazy support and fans that you uh, when you go on the road and you play. You know, you think about Toronto and Montreal, just the passion of uh, that runs so deep in the history and the, uh, the tradition of both those teams. I'll tell you, Detroit's right there as well, but Montreal and Toronto are. are uh, 
pretty special to visit and go play in. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a dad. I've got a couple of boys, and I find it hard as they get older to uh, to stop fathering. You know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard not to be dad with the advice and constantly keep after them, but you've got sons that are, of course, one with uh, some NHL experience, and um, and as they continue to you know work their way up, do you get tempted to try to coach them on the side, or is it a good thing? Do you try to give them some sage advice on their gameplay? I think it's a fine line. You know, even though we uh, played the game for so long and at the highest level, they still think of you as dad, and you've got to make sure that you support them. And for me, it was always... You know, I always wanted them to work hard, respect the game, and treat coaches and teammates and everybody around the game with respect. And if they did that and went out and, and put the effort in, I was fine. But I kind of wait to be asked what I think about their game. I don't come out and, and jump on them and criticize their game until I'm asked. <laughs> then I'll make maybe a few notes and, and just talk about, you know, the things they did well and maybe certain things they could have done a little different. But you're still a dad. Yeah. All in all, uh, you can't forget that. It's hard to let go. There's got to be a little pressure on them, too, though, when your dad's a Hockey Hall of Famer to rise up to dad's skill level, y'all. Well, it's something that they've grown up with uh, since they put on the skates. And, you know, sometimes it's tough and they hear some things and they're told things. But, uh, you know, they're playing for the right reasons. They're really passionate about the game. And, you know, Chris has been a six-year pro now and he's, he's in Hershey with Washington uh, organization. And he's leading uh, the, the American League in scoring and having a really good year and being very productive and hopefully gets an opportunity at some time and Ryan my youngest is 21 and he's first year pro uh, with the Rangers farm team in Hartford so um, I'm really proud of how they conduct themselves and that's one of the things that we talk about uh, sometimes is there's a lot of good that comes with it it opens some doors to a certain extent but on the flip side of it the expectations and the pressures and the criticism that you get sometimes uh is, is more than the normal guy. Yeah. Uh, so you're traveling around with a lot of, I'm, I'm assuming there's a lot of former teammates. Yeah, we have a nice crew. Good to get together here for a week and, uh, you know, tour from city to city, these little towns, and play games and raise some money and talk about, uh, you know, old stories and old days and current events. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, against to Leamington. I hear it's a pretty special place and a big event that's going to be going on. And uh, I hear it's a lot of fun playing there. Plus, I'm going to catch up with my good buddy Keith Crowder then. Ah. Right around there. So Excellent. Is Rod Black, by the way, traveling with, with you guys on the bus? No, he's not on okay. the bus. Well, if you get a chance to talk to him, tell him to grow back the mustache. All right. Okay. All right. I will. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ray Bork. A pleasure talking with you, and we'll see you Saturday night at the Heinz Arena. I look forward to it.